uh, welcome everybody. Um, thanks to uh, Elina for the assistance. Um, so we, uh, for the workshop, we will be speaking about investing in environmental education, uh, investing uh, time, resources, in order to build uh, humans uh, and build capacities and uh, skills uh, that can change the world and have a meaning uh, and meaningful uh, impact uh, on our societies. So I wanted to share with you a case study. Uh, I mean, a case study on uh, a mix of several projects that I have been doing uh, in order to showcase how we could uh, uh, develop this, uh, an environmental program uh, based on uh, some basic me mechanisms. So, first, uh, the idea of the program uh, that I'm going to uh, explain to you was to enable children to contribute in positive way to their families, communities, and the environment. So basically, this is uh, the, 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 the main frame of the, the, the program that we're going to be uh, pursuing in Senegal that has been piloted already over a year ago. Uh, and uh, that was touching already 50 schools. And uh, for this year, we want to go uh, beyond. So uh, the duration of the project is going to be 36 months, uh, touching uh, primary, secondary schools and also university uh, in Senegal. Uh, the beneficiaries are students, teachers and parents and the activities, as you may uh, read uh, on the side, are teachers training, students workshop, creation of eco teams, uh, school audit, uh, uh, creation of an action plan and uh, the eco bank which is an eco fund uh, that's uh, being created uh, through this program um, monitoring and evaluation so the objective of the program are uh, to improve quality of life through urban greening and beautification uh, inculcate a habit of cleanliness and foster ecological waste management introduction of financial literacy through community green fund which is the eco bank that i was mentioning about Obviously, the program uh, fits also the framework of the Sustainable Development Goals uh, in the goal number 4, 9, 12, 13, 14, and 15. A first a situation on the waste uh, uh, problem in Senegal. So uh, bear with me, uh, I'm a francophone and uh, all the information is in French, but this means solid waste, urban solid waste. Uh, you'll notice that uh, the rain is not uh, there for, no, re for uh, no reason. So solid waste are coming from households, uh, activities and uh, in the I'm gonna so basically it says that uh, they're always growing and it uh, raises lots of issues for cities especially when it rains and I'll explain to you why after so this is pretty much Dakar has 3.2 million habitants 52 kilograms per habitant which results to 2,000 tons a day So basically, uh, this is what the composition of solid waste looks like in Dakar. I'm going to mark a pause here. Uh, so for that first phase, uh, the idea was to situate the, 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 the waste uh, situation in Senegal, in, in Dakar particularly, which is the, the urban hub of, uh, of Senegal, the capital that uh, has uh, three uh, 0.2 million uh, habitants and uh, Dakar is a small neck as you've seen in the in the video is that that's just small part which has all the economic activity uh, concentrated in that area meaning that this is the urban spot and this is where waste is being generated to the maximum so uh, uh, the uh, video is uh, highlighting those facts and uh, is catered to kids to, understand, to better understand what the situation of waste is and what the opportunity is, obviously. Uh, 
So this concept, the concept of life cycle, uh, life cycle analysis, uh, is important to uh, to explain to kids because if we want to explain circular economy and explain how we can do better, they need to understand how uh, the goods that they are using, where are they coming from, and uh, uh, sometimes that link is not that uh, obvious to them. So therefore, they need to understand that resources are being extracted, transformed. Uh, transported and then uh, consumed, then to become waste after. So instead of uh, that uh, that uh, model, we are suggesting another uh, model, which is a more circular model, which uh, is uh, based on the integrated uh, solid waste management, which is the next phase. As you may have understood, this is uh, the hierarchy of actions in order to uh, better uh, uh, manage uh, waste by reducing first and eliminating the, the minimum possible. So the red part is eliminating, as you may have understood. So we want to see how we can go from waste to a resource. So everything starts by segregating waste, but in a simplified way, because waste segregation has been promoted in Africa uh, sometimes by using the Western canon of uh, way of doing. Composting. Eco bricks. So basically, uh, on, in this program, we're trying to simplify as much as possible a complex uh, reality, which is waste management. And uh, most of the time, very reduced to just the fact of uh, consuming and then throwing. Then sometimes it's very difficult for uh, uh, students, kids, to really understand and grasp this reality. Therefore, uh, when we started the program, uh, it was very important to see how we could uh, um, give out information in a very uh, fun and, um, and playful way in order to have a complex reality being understood correctly. So the objective of the, the program is actually to align uh, with the SDG and, and raise a level of awareness and a shift of mindset of environmental issues and climate change. And the project, the project aims to bridge the gap between uh, awareness and action through experiential learning, global solidarity, solidarity and civic engagement by providing guidance, information tools to empower the community. We aim to establish schools as hubs of inspiration and action for the whole community. Shift of mindset is definitely necessary because people most of the time do not see their territory with the, uh, they see it as a poor area where we aim to show them how rich it is. Therefore, when you're using the EcoBrick solution, uh, somehow, instead of seeing waste, you're seeing a resource. So uh, it starts already shifting. And um, so the change of paradigm is definitely important. And uh, it's to say that if climate <laughs> is changing, then why shouldn't we? Uh, so the, the project embeds a vision that uh, children are the most important stakeholder. Why? Because they are the ones that are gonna face climate change. So they need to start acting now. Uh, schools are hubs of inspiration. And uh, by school, I mean not only formal education, but also informal education, which is happening sometimes on the street, which is happening pretty much everywhere in families, etc. cetera. And uh, I like to say that nature is our best school. Uh, adults are not a lost cause because uh, when they are, uh, uh, um, when we put them in the face of reality and they understand why they should change, and especially if we are able to link their change with uh, the uh, financial benefit that they could get, then they are definitely okay to, to jump on board and they're really to invest. Uh, and by providing tool guidance and information uh, to empower and change mindsets, 
we believe that communities can thrive. It needs to be very simple. You see the waste, you see it now, you do your eco brick today, and uh, tomorrow you get a better space or a better environment. Or we link it also to the basic needs that they have, because once a school does an audit um, of, um, of their, their school, knowing if uh, how much electricity do they spend, how much water do they do, do, does the, the, the school uh, uh, spend, uh, it becomes very uh, crisp to their mind, and then they bring that to home. And sometimes it's very important to understand that kids in Africa, most of the time, do not have the power. The reason being that they are not providing anything. But once they start bringing at home new sets of uh, ways of saving, then they become a major contributor. And it's important to have that in mind. So this is the project ecosystem. Basically, schools are hubs of inspiration. So this is where people are learning the good behaviors and what are we trying to avoid. We're trying to avoid to burn waste because it brings climate change. We are trying to avoid to, uh, uh, to um, waste water uh, through our waste everywhere. And this is why uh, the video starts with some rain, because most of the time kids do not understand that that small action of uh, throwing some waste on the street can have a serious effect because all this goes to the ocean. Therefore, they think that it's a small action, but that small action done by millions of people becomes a big action and a big uh, trauma to the planet. But on this other side, on the flip side, we want to show them that uh, washing their hands is super important, understanding what's the value of renewable energy, uh, how they should dispose of waste if they have to, how they can use uh, eco bricks as a way of uh, having a personal garbage bin. But those skills are uh, supposed to be thrown into the society because from what we have understood, every time a kid uh, takes a bottle, brings it home and says, they told me at school to put my waste here. They say they, they are completely crazy at school. And why are you doing it? They say, oh, they, we're going to build uh, some benches with it. The whole family is already aware because that curiosity brings them to look at that solution. And once they see the benches, it's done. We already scored a huge point. But there is always the issue of sustainability. So how do we keep it sustainable? So what we've done is to, and I'm, I'm jumping because I have so much to say that <laughs> I might be going from, but as you may have seen, uh, because the, that's why you have the picture in front of you, uh, you have gardening workshop, you have organic waste, because bear in mind, you're doing eco bricks all the non-organic waste goes into the bottle. Then obviously you're segregating waste. You don't need to start emphasizing on segregating. You just give the insight of doing eco break and then the segregation starts happening. And then kids are saying, so now what do we do with the peel of banana? Oh, that peel of banana goes into the composting and then that second activity happens. So also we have a program embedded, which is called Adopt a Tree, which you're gonna understand why it's, uh, it's there, but just, keep in mind this, uh, this project ecosystem. Uh, so uh, when we get to the other slides, you have it. Uh. So the main strategy is actually to uh, have a, a real meaning for saving the planet. If saving the planet hasn't have a repercussion uh, for people, then uh, they ask this, themselves why, because the, the risk is not immediate in their mind. So we need to gamify it and incentivize it. So this is why we, we combine uh, pay, for system, uh, free, pay for success mechanism uh, in order to create a community fund. And the community fund is, uh, the community fund is, um, is uh, actually, oh my God, I'm, I'm losing my, my uh, is um, funded <laughs> by the green action that kids are doing. So all those actions have uh, a certain set of points, like if you look at uh, the, the down part, an eco quiz is 50 points, a workshop is 100 points, uh, an eco brick is between 25 to 200 points because an eco brick can be small, can be big, can be, uh, can be, I'm sorry, can be, uh, so you have different sizes of bottles, therefore, uh, 
Therefore, this is why we have like several sizes, uh, several sizes and several sets of points. Tree planting is a thousand points. This is why we have the adopt a tree uh, program. And all these points can turn into a savings account for each kid. But if they keep the school clean for at least three months, and we can visit at any time, every time we visit, if the school is not clean, they lose points instead of raising them. If someone in the classroom doesn't participate after they took the pledge of all participating, the whole class loses a point. Because once again, that uh, idea of being into solidarity is super important and linking also uh, the action to uh, what we are pledging for. Because everybody says that in environment is so important and then so few are doing something. So we want that those schools, once they say, yes, we're going to do it, then uh, they have to be solidar in solidarity. So we, we don't need to check them, they check themselves. And a cleanup is 100 points. A cleanup is 100 points uh, at the beginning because we aim to kill cleanups. Because normally, if people stop throwing their stuff on the ground, then there is nothing more to clean. So the interest that we have into this tech technology, I would say, is the simplicity. Uh, everybody can find a bottle and a stick. Waste is everywhere. So starting creating value out of the waste that you pick up on, on the street or that you fail, to, uh, that you don't want to throw and put directly in your bottle becomes a simplified action. And it's as simple as throwing on the ground and even more meaningful because you don't have to pick up after. It's pedagogy because pedagogy is about repeating. And the fact that you're repeating that action is somehow talking to you about waste reduction because you, the idea is down the line, it starts speaking about, okay, you see all the waste that you create? So wouldn't it be better to use a reusable bottle? Wouldn't it be better to use, uh, 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 not to throw your waste on the floor, etc. So pedagogy works very well. It's uh, replicable. replicable. Replicability is super important for any kind of project that you want to bring to scale. Uh, uh, and also it involves responsibility. When we're talking about cons uh, uh, consumption, responsible consumption, it's also a matter of what do I do myself uh, with the waste that I create. And if I can not create that waste, it's even better. And it's super impactful because it, uh, it sparkles uh, lots of interest among kids when they see that, uh, that bottle that they produced, that was a bottle that had water and now became a waste bin and now is a brick that they can sit on a bench. So it's a way of bringing circular economy in a very clear and uh, participative way. Because sometimes so many concepts are so far out of reach that uh, we're explaining something that people cannot grasp. And this is how we show them that in fact, when we say circular economy, when we talk about uh, um, uh, reducing waste and eliminating the concept of waste, it's this kind of stuff that we want to say. And something that I wanted to share with you, once I was in a school and uh, I saw the kids running, going to the other school. And I said, what are they doing? They said, they're going to get waste because now the school is so clean that they have no more waste here and they need to have those benches. So they went to the other school to pick up waste and the other school said, no, we have the same program too. So we don't want you guys to take our waste because we need it. So that was not waste anymore. That was a resource. So few this is the pledging uh, moment. And we asked the kids to really, it's really symbolic. They have to pledge. And if one is not okay with, uh, with doing the program, he has the full capacity of just saying, I do not want to do it. And we respect that. But if everybody says that they will do it, they have to do it. So that guarantees us most of the time, 100% participation. Participation that we can count because the bottles we can count and we can know if the bottles are well filled or not. And we ask about quality as well, which is very important because at the beginning kids try to fool you. They just take a bottle and they put a little bit of waste inside and they say, I did. And we say, okay, great, you participated. But now it's about quality, because if you don't build quality, then it's as if you didn't do anything. 
they do social marketing, like uh, hand washing uh, is something super important. So we've been asking to kids to find what's the best place to put the information where it would be safe and sustainable because we don't want people to take it away, take it down. Uh, and what would be the best angle to, to use? And they do it themselves. So they start uh, seeing themselves as agents of change and they decide what's the best position where everybody would see it. So they start also building on strategies and they love being part of, uh, of the building of the project. Teachers. Uh, as you may see on the on the on the screen, uh, it's uh, January 2019. So meaning that for the last two years, we've been piloting this for 50 for 50 schools, and to see how sustainable it is. And I've been uh, um, uh, trying to be out of the program to see if it works. And I have great news for you guys: it works. And I don't intervene anymore. And it works. And they keep on doing it. And even if there is no resource given by me, because I just needed to quick start it, now they go to the community and they say, we need benches. We're gonna do the material. If the community can just offer a little bit of help and they are able to build benches for the community, which is great. In families, because those points, uh, they are just for school. But if it's for the community, we allow the community to be able to get money uh, right away. So uh, uh, this picture was taken in one of the, um, it's not a slum, but it's not far from being a slum in Dakar. And the whole community was uh, told about uh, starting uh, uh, managing their waste through the eco brick system and that we would pay for waste. They said they, were, they, are, they are crazy. They will never do that. And that woman was the first one that said, okay, you know what, why not? And she started it. And once she started, she was able to not only uh, produce uh, the first time $30, the second time $200, and that was the, uh, uh, the, the full tuition for her kids, and the whole family started doing eco breaks. So meaning that we didn't need to go to the tailor and have waste management for the tailor. They were doing it themselves because they know that the tailor has clean waste, except when it gets into the other stuff and mixed with the other way. So they were anticipating and getting it right away. Kids are doing also, uh, they have a, a garden and it's super important because now that we are producing compost, it's important for them to understand how the compost works and uh, how green it can get. Because if you want to sell something to the community and if you want community to start adopting uh, composting, but it's definitely important that they see the fruits uh, that are coming from uh, that garden that has no uh, fertilizer. And these are some construction done at, in schools. And uh, so this is where the investment part comes. Because we ask to parents, uh, your school is not safe because you have no fence. So how much would you invest for a fence? And they give a, an amount because they know what is the cost of building. And then from that amount, we give them a deal and that deal becomes the way that we finance the whole system. Because once again, the waste was free. We just needed people to be motivated. And then once they see that they're gonna have one of the only walls done with bottles, everybody's super excited to see that. This is another uh, example where uh, we worked uh, uh, with the Marathon of Dakar and the Marathon of Dakar uh, as a service provider, because we take care of, uh, my company takes care of the cleanliness of, uh, of the marathon for the, the, the last three editions. And uh, I can guarantee you that uh, 20 minutes after the marathon, we have 10,000 people and there is not a single paper on 20 kilometers because we are super efficient. And all these bottles, when, they are, uh, when we pick them up, then we start another process, which is the corporate and social responsibility part, because they didn't pay for that. But they're super happy to see that with a little bit of help, they can do more. And that more can be significant. This is a classroom, one of the first classrooms that would build in Senegal, done out of 4,000 bottles picked up from the marathon of Dakar. This is another construction that was done uh, uh, for the bottling company. 
because we told them that it would make more sense if they want to uh, have a program that is not actually enforced in Senegal, which is the extended producer responsibility. Uh, it's a mechanism that exists, but it's not used, not in Africa, because extended producer re uh, responsibility works in Canada when I'm in Canada. But when I'm in Senegal for the same bottle, then uh, no, it doesn't work here because the market is not asking for it because laws are not enforced in the same way. So we asked to that company if they would be interested into having a sexy project where they could build uh, their own installation out of bottles. And they said, yes, why not? So we did 11,000 bottles and we sold also to uh, the city uh, the fact of removing the sand that is uh, obstructing the streets. Because most of the time they are paying a lot of money to remove that sand, but that sand we could capture into bottles. So this is 22 tons of, uh, of sand in the bottles. And it gives you a bioclimatic uh, uh, um, construction. So I think, I think we are done. Uh, that was my last slide. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing that super fast. So uh, there were some points that uh, we have Yonut uh, that uh, is online with us. And uh, we spoke about gamification and how we could uh, probably bring more fun into uh, the program that we want to uh, um, launch for Africa, uh, which is going to be a Pan-African program. And uh, this is a, a huge, huge deal because Africa has been trying to be united for so long. And I think that with this Let's Do It uh, program, we are able to uh, bring uh, on the same page uh, kids from the continent. And that's super, super nice. I'm uh, very excited uh, to uh, uh, share with you more. And if you guys have questions, I probably have a tons of things to do, but I have to select uh, uh, what to say. But uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going to add a little bit uh, about that extended producer responsibility. A few years ago, thinking about it, uh, uh, because I live half in Montreal and half in Senegal, I was thinking, how can I link the two? And uh, I launched a campaign called the Billion Bottle Challenge, because I saw that in Montreal, uh, to make a long story short, $29 million are being thrown in the garbage because uh, consignment systems are working, but some people neglect those five cents or 10 cents, they put it directly in the garbage because five cents is nothing to them. And I was seeing that if I were had in Senegal five cents for a bottle, I wouldn't have any bottle on the streets because people would ru run for it. Five cents in Canada is 25 francs in Senegal. So I said, how can we do that? I linked 11 schools from Canada and from Senegal. And I said to the kids from Canada, you know those five cents, they are super meaningful to your friends in Senegal. And they bought 40,000 bottles in Canada. And those 40,000 bottles helped us fund the program in some areas in Senegal. So just to say that we can create global solidarity by taking the advantage of the mechanism that are existing. Sometimes we are looking at the glass half empty. We don't pay attention to the half full part. And I'm done now, question for you guys. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. I'm saying thank you for your attention, but you guys have been probably sleeping. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I just want to share that I also would like thank you for really like great um, presentation and re really great uh, visuals. And I see people are clapping indeed. And I also saw that people were really impressed in their like in this chat room that's also the share that are oh, that these are great ideas that you have uh, shared yeah so guys if you have questions please feel free uh feel free to to cook me but maybe maybe uh stefan you can also really shortly talk about your uh, project what we have in let's do it world because here are a lot of people who doesn't know about it i think it, actually the, the the project that we have with let's do it world is going to be as rich as this one why because it's going to be a diverse program in the sense that we have 17 countries 
and the 17 countries in my mind for the first year are going to express themselves in, the, the, in, in whatever fits their environment. So we cannot have a one single program that fits everybody. It's impossible because the context and the realities are not the same. And actually that would make us more poor if we do not have that complexity and that diversity. So uh, keeping diversity is totally great. And uh, I'm expecting that after this year, uh, when we take the sum of all the experiences that we gathered, we will have a bigger and a better program. So for now, the program is gonna reach uh, 17 countries and uh, we're aiming uh, to get around a thousand schools. Uh, but I already have an announcement for you uh, I take the commitment or already making the thousand schools myself. And then I want a thousand more. So, uh, because I want to make sure that uh, we get all Senegal on board and there are 12,000 schools. So I should be able to get at least 1,000. So uh, we want to reach really a massive scale and make sure that we have agents of change uh, with the Let's Do It movement. Because what we're doing is so great, but we cannot do it only once a year. So uh, we have to keep on working. And uh, by, keep on, by keeping working, especially in Africa, where uh, the issues are so, so daunting. It's, it's, we have, like, when we're talking about waste mapping, let's say, I would, waste the whole, I would map the whole city. Like I would map streets, the city, the country, because waste is everywhere. So the education part is so important, especially for Africa, because we do not necessarily have all the, the, the mechanisms and the systems uh, to be able to take care of our waste. And at the same time, uh, there is an, uh, an eagerness for development and for, um, uh, for the modern life. So when uh, people are in, in the capacity to consume, they consume and uh, the waste that's created it's humongous. So this program aims also to, to unite us because this is a, a great way for us to be able to exchange on uh, our experiences and building a stronger network. It means that in my mind, the World Cleanup Day should be the world cleanest day for Africa if we are working all year. And uh, waste being a problem that is a, a daily problem, we need to be able to impact on a daily basis. So that's why uh, uh, the fact that we are uh, going to be working with ACNOA, bringing sports into it, uh, bringing uh, also gamification, which I would love you know, to jump in whenever he feels ready for it and speak about it and show that kind of solidarity. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. There are already things that are great happening. Uh, so we should use them. We should be the first one doing waste management, reusing. And UNOT has already built uh, a nice program. So let's inspire ourselves from this program and let's have him on board. He's African too. Thank you for your invitation, Stefan. It was nice to see uh, how you engage communities in Senegal and uh, to see that those bricks. And while you were talking, I remember something Thomas Ilf, uh, the Estonian president, told us when he visited Romania, that he is planting trees and he's old enough, but he's planting trees because he thinks somebody else will enjoy those trees. He won't be able to see those trees growing up. So I think investing in education is the same as planting trees. You won't see many, Probably you won't see the result immediately. So it's something you have to do it constantly and nonstop doing it and investing in, in education. And maybe you'll see the results or your kids will see the results. And I think this is what we have to do everywhere in, in this planet, especially in, in countries where the waste is a, is a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, some words about me. My name is Ionut Ordechescu. I'm from Let's Do It Romania. Let's Do It Romania joined Let's do it movement in 2010. We had our cleanup at that year. Since then, we raised almost 2 million people in cleanups and we thought we don't have to stop only doing cleanups. Let's do something more. So we are doing educational programs and we are very well engaged in bringing technology in helping cleanups. You, we have, I have a workshop with Lucia from Tresho tomorrow Please join to see more what we want to build. 
So let's jump into Let's Do It program we had in uh, 2018. We thought, how to make sure that schools want to get involved into a program? How to make them uh, more, to make it more funny? How to make it more attractive for them? So we thought about a very simple gamification. Uh, having some prizes and have, having um, activities to do with schools and awarding points for making, doing these activities. So we searched for partners and we found three partners that offer us money for prizes. We were lucky in 2018, we received 70,000 euro for prizes. Then we wanted to find what kind of activities. So we thought about some activities. And at that year, we thought about doing echo training for teachers, echo training for students, but also echo trainings for students' parents. Uh, then we wanted to build, to have activities like uh, trash art activities, uh, waste collecting, <clears throat> uh, like sorting, cleanups, and uh, planting trees or having gardens, uh, vegetable gardens inside the schoolyards. So it was easy. We had a partner, we had prizes, and then we built a platform to make it easy for teachers to upload the documentation. And I will share the screen with what this platform is. And please interrupt me every time you have a question or you don't understand something. It's in Romanian, but I will use Google Translate to translate it uh, immediately. Wait a second to see where is my screen. Even I, if I have my eyeglasses, still I think, do you see my screen? Yeah, OK, stop it. So this is what a teacher is seeing when it's logging into the platform. It's seeing a leaderboard. And I will translate to English. Let's see. OK, so current ranking. Every time a teacher enters into, into this platform, he is seeing that somebody is in the top 10. And we offered 10 prizes for the, those amount of money. And they wanted to be there, to be in the top 10. Um, so they wanted to be more engaged in doing activities. And what kind of activities a teacher can do? A teacher can do uh, echo training for students. This is a, a dummy uh, activity I put it here. It's something that the teacher did it, I don't know, it was in 2018. He posted some photos. He posted different uh, photos during the session. He can post it anything. To, to mark it, to document it, uh, that this activity has taken place. And he can, he can do it easily for all the kind of activities. Uh, wait a second to translate again. Come on, come on, come on. OK, so he can do it for any kind of activity. In the end, he is going back to this leader, leaderboard. Wait to load it. It's from my computer. OK, so this was super easy for a teacher. We, we started the platform, uh, this web application, and we changed it every time a teacher had issue uploading data, uh, inserting photos, working with it, uh, understanding where it has to go, and so on and so forth. So we adapted every time to make it easier for the teacher. And it was super funny because the teacher, teachers called all of us from the team I upload the data. Why I'm not in the leaderboard? Uh, I did this. What should I do more? So uh, this is about the school. Uh, one mention, what, everything you are seeing, there are dummy data. Uh, everything is on, from my computer. That's why it's moving so slow. We don't have any more the servers, but we have the code, and we have this uh, dummy data. Now, I want to show you what is happening behind the platform, what is happening with all the data, because teachers are uploading the data, like uh, uh, pictures of their uh, activities, um, data about the activities, receipts from the collecting company that is collecting the trash. But somebody has to validate. And people from Let's Do It Romania team validated this kind of activities. You see the, here, this is the, the interface for the, for the Let's Do It Romania user. He can 
reject activity, he can see the rejected activities or he can see the, the one that needs validation. And he sees here a list of uh, five schools that has different kinds of activities with different points and it, they need uh, to be validated. And just click on the one and he can choose to, to validate the, the activity. So in the end, we knew based on the photos you are seeing here, or based on different other documents we ask for each kind of activity, if an activity has to be validated. So when the activity was valid, it, it's validated, immediately it's going to the dashboard and immediately the school is thinking, and again, the school wants to compete with other school. So it was like a snowball. And every time the schools wanted to do something to raise points to win, the, to be in the first 10 uh, uh, winners. So we did it. Uh, I will show you some, wait a second, wait, where is my window? I think here. Okay, some results after this uh, activity, after this program, sorry. We had 520 schools from Romania. Romania is a 20 million people country with 40 counties, and we wanted to accept only 10 schools per county, but many registered in the platform. And when they registered, they had to say what they want to do with the money if they are receiving the first prize, the second prize, or the, the first category prize, the second category prize, and the fourth category prize to make sure that we will send exactly what they need in the beginning, not they are changing their mind. Throughout this program in 2017, 2018, uh, 500 tons of waste was collected by kids and teachers. From uh, these 500 tons, 67 tons, uh, it was electronic waste and batteries. 14,000 trees were planted uh, 300, 300 square meters uh, vegetable gardens and so on. The numbers were super huge. And this was done with a gamification a concept with schools, with teachers, students, and that's all. But what is more important and what makes me feel super energized about this project, actually about this concept, is the fact that um, I will stop sharing, is the fact that the schools contacted us after the program and told us that, guys, people in the community gather around the school to help the school to win the prize. And from, for Romania, for the first time, the community raised around a school not around uh, a bodega or a church, or I don't know what kind of institution, political institution in the community. The community was around educational or cultural something. And this was amazing. And that's why we are raising money now in Romania to continue this project in 2021, 2022 to make it for more schools and to add new activities. And I can tell you as new activities, we want to have like a social prize, something like first 10 schools or first 20 schools, they will have to, let's say, uh, be adapted by an influencer and go on social media and promote the programs or promote how to be eco-sustainable and make sure that they have many viewers with this video. And as many viewers they have, they will win a prize. And third, we want to uh, uh, get partners in, from this, different industries like communication, IT companies, or uh, banking. And we want, depending on this, to add activities like financial learning, it's financial teaching, or IT teaching. So something more than echoes being echo. And you can make different kind of, uh, adapt, uh, uh, you can adapt this program, you can make it so flexible that can be fit, that can fit with any kind of partner. So guys, um, you have work to find what kind of activities you want to, to make work in your community, in your countries. And 
I think the idea of having a competition inside a, in a country and together all countries in African continent, like an Olympic something, I think it's super brilliant and I would like to be part of this project. So thank you for listening to me. Uh, if you have any kind of questions, please raise it. Or if you don't have it now, you can find me later. Uh, guys from Let's Do It World, World Clean Up uh, had, has my contact. So I'm reachable anytime. So thank you again. And thank you guys from Africa and Let's Do It for doing what you are doing. We are doing actually. Yeah, thank you very much for sharing. And I also uh, uh, like um, uh, echo with uh, Hades uh, I, this uh, notion that this idea of competition is really great. That to have this kind of uh, liveliness and and competition amongst this kids and also the whole communities. I think we could take some time for some questions or or yeah other notions on this topic i saw that carlos was also like raising the hand but I, maybe is having the microphone on so oh i'm sorry yeah oh. i just uh, i i just uh, wanted to say a huge thank you to stefan and and also to jonut and of course knowing this project really well uh definitely there i think the biggest um, beauty of uh, jonut project is that uh it raises a competition and really healthy com competition um, regarding of engaging the communities around the schools. And instead of pushing uh, from some kind of other organization to make the change happen, the change will be happening inside of the people, inside of the community. And it's really highly engaging and leading into positive impacts. And I think it's a really healthy way to do. And it's also, I think, really sustainable way to go. Um, it's also, I think, is, is engaging local uh, local uh, municipalities. And so it's really great things to put all together and also to try to understand how we can work on this platform all together. Um, if you talk about our competition, then as Akno, our global partner is uh, definitely could be part of it and we can have really great messages on, on this project. So Another top. Sorry Looking to interrupt. Forward. Another another topic that uh, um, this kind of activity will raise is the fact that somehow people will understand exactly uh, what it's missing. But we know that it's missing, let's say, infrastructure. But we know pinpoints from the infrastructure that are missing, or we might find out different uh, way of resolving this uh, missing point. So. Um, I think this is also a good thing, like you Heidi told that uh, you Heidi said it before, um, a uh, uh, connection with the authorities. So if you guys can make a connection with authorities, and if authorities are reliable kind, uh, reliable ones, so yeah, it will be a good point, uh, an extra added value. Also, I'd like to add, it's maybe philosophical, but I think the change uh, in personal behavior will start with understanding. And this understanding was coming with inner, inner motivation. And this is exactly where we can gain us so much of, uh, of this inner motivation and understanding. This is my community, this is my home, what I can do. Uh, this is my people and let's change it together. And I think it's really super uh, powerful. And uh, I, I think it could be really great uh, this kind of strategy for, for Africa. One question I have for from people from Africa. I'm seeing here many names. I would like to meet meet you guys in, in person next year without this COVID situation. Uh, what do you think? Can you make it like this, or do you think about other kind of approaches to to add it to a program to involve more schools and around them communities? What do you think? I mean, I'm curious about your opinion. So Carlos, what do you think about it? Carlos, you got that occupied maybe. Sorry, can you repeat? <laughs> yes, here you are. Uh, no, no, can you repeat the question, please, again? Thank you. Yeah, um, I'm curious. Um, 
if a gamification approach for involving local communities together with school is something yes. that can be well fitted to African countries or we can add something more or together or not? I mean, now, the, our idea, it's, it's very important, is to use, uh, we are calling EcoCent, it's uh, 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 a local where we are there, we can uh, occupy the children after schools, we can also train the youth, uh, we, we can also practice for the, how to use the trash, but we are going also to start educating our local communities to respect the green, the, the nature, uh, planting trees, but also conservating. That's the idea is, of course, working with the schools and local communities. Inside the village, uh, outside the Maputo areas also, not only in the urban areas, but also outside, of course, because the cities are growing faster and are growing uh, uh, deeply, uh, uh, destroying all the ecosystems. The idea is now put the tree in our agenda, put the nature in our agenda also. That's why I was, I was so happy to hear you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Carlos, and thank you, Damaris from Cameroon. Uh, yeah, uh, I think I uh, I was too enthusiastic to say that, or I will repeat myself. Um, we started this program after many years of doing uh, cleanups and some years of getting some courage that we can do this kind of activities. And we started with small iteration, and then we come with this uh, plan. I'm not saying that you have to to to, to make it immediately but it can be like a target in time or i don't know maybe miracles can happen kadi i'm seeing you have raised the hand please yeah uh well i have questions to, to stefan mainly for first of all thank you for the presentation it's really uh great the work that you're doing and uh, uh and in the world where there's so many distractions for for kids and adults it's uh it can be quite the challenge sometimes to to get them interested in it um, and my question is mainly, I, I know that uh, we all, not only in Africa, but also in Europe, we are dealing mostly with the, a lot of the waste, it's single use and it keeps coming. Or for example, also the, the bottles that you use to do echo bricks. So um, yes, it's important to um, deal with that. But I, I'm wondering is this, how much or have you also put the focus on the possi possibilities of creating some uh, reusable systems, like for example, bottles that are refillable. Uh, I know that uh, creating big system, it takes a lot of uh, infrastructure, but we know also from Asia that there are some low tech solutions possible as well. So it's important to also uh, engage the children into really thinking about not only managing the waste, but creating systems that create less waste. So I'm just wondering how much have you done work on, on that direction? Absolutely. Uh, one of the mechanism which is possible uh, if we use the gamification system is that if, uh, let's say, in a classroom, all, do, all those who have a reusable bottle could earn points. So right away, you create an incentive uh, by uh, creating some value about the point system. So it, because right now, uh, if you look at it on an economical standpoint, uh, the reusable bottle uh, is very expensive for a low-income community. Like it costs them way too much, and then the parents are not investing in that. In general, they're using they're reusing a bottle, uh, a PET bottle uh, that's going to be reused. But uh, but it depends. I'm not saying that it's uh, it's impossible. It is possible, but it has to be worked on. But it's not something that you can generalize to 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 everyone. So sometimes it's not scalable. But it's definitely a point, uh, and it's something that's uh, definitely possible, and that has to be uh, taken in account here. Yeah. Thank you. That's great to hear. Definitely, it is step by step uh, development. It takes time as well, and it's important to understand in what country what we can do. Yeah. Thank you, well, Katrikala.
Is there any comments or questions? Hi, everyone. Maybe you can ask a question in, in, in the chat. Okay, that's better. Mm -hmm. But you are muted. Yeah. <laughs> that's why it's better too. <laughs> Cannot hear. Okay, Ndasa. Ndasa, you wanted to ask something? Probably not. Okay. I have a question. How is internet in this in, in African countries? I mean, the city, internet in the city schools or rural schools? Some uh, uh, internet can be an issue. Yeah. Internet can be, an issue. I'm in uh, Dakar and I had to change spots in order to have like a good connection enough. So uh, access to internet is wide, but sometimes it can be a little bit difficult and challenging. So uh, this is something that has to be taken in account. Uh, when we are using that, it can be, it can be uh, one of the, the, the factors that we have to definitely. Uh... So I don't know if in the development it's possible for uh, people to be able to upload information, uh, not necessarily have access in real time, and uh, just connect to be able to, uh, to upload the information about the activities that they have done, etc. But there is access to internet. So that's why sometimes also in several programs, uh, it depends on if you are in rural or in urban areas, uh, you cannot necessarily do the same things. So using low tech is always a winner. And Carlos is also pointing out this uh, access to electricity in many rural regions. So it's like, there is a difference that two worlds in the so same country. Electricity true. About the electricity issue, once again, when we flip it, uh, it gives it uh, a good, um, it's a good um, opening for, um, for uh, renewable energy as well. Uh, that can be shown to kids, uh, even if it's small. Uh, we've, we've done it here in Dakar in very small systems because kids have been hearing about solar energy, but they didn't know how it works. So uh, it's little things that we can, uh, we can try. I'm not saying that it's going to solve the problem, but we need to start uh, with, with a point, at least. And uh, sometimes just the awareness is, uh, is already interesting to, to, to have. So I see that it's, uh, why is, oh, time is up. That's why everybody's super silent already. Uh, no, no, nothing, just now I thank you very much because just now I get some experience, Senegal, Cameroon, for, I said my country, Rwanda, just now we are very smart for Zelo West. Just now I'm uh, in the sector of Zelo West. Uh, to take some waste to produce and to sell again. Just now we have uh, some chain, not our country, no waste. Every waste we can produce, agro waste, we can produce anything and to sell the people. Yes, a waste is low material for a country. That's our chain I have. Next time I will share the experience because just now we are, we are in lockdown. Uh, no, I, I have no time to prepare the presentation. Next time I will share you, our, share you our experience we have in our country. I think you really like it. Thank you, my brother, Senegal. Thank you. I respect you. Thank you, Heidi. 
for sharing that. Just time-wise, we still have around like 25 minutes if that's necessary. So there is no really rush to leave and we can still use this time to share some insights if you have any. <sighs> My people are a little bit tired, huh? Ah, it has been so long day. Imagine why we started basically like a 10 hours ago and we have been in each session uh, as presenters in some of them as well as you and me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'd like to also say a huge thank you for all the participants and it would be really great also, I would, as we talked here in privately, it would be really great to understand what you are doing and being part of our family. That's absolutely great. Welcome. And uh, thank you, Jonot, and thank you, Stefan, and everyone. Pleasure. My and thank pleasure. you for great questions, Kadri. Thank you for great question. It's really important that we are seeking the sustainability and and uh, looking for longer perspectives as well. This is really important. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, uh, it's pretty much the end of this session. So thank you, uh, thank you, ID, uh, and I have to say, uh, a big thank you to ID. She's not expecting that, but I have to say it. Uh, great inspiration. She's a she's a wonderful person, and uh, she support and friend. Seriously, like uh, she's really trying hard, and she she loves Africa, and uh, she really works for us. And sometimes. Uh, honestly, I'm like, man, what did we do? Like, uh, but we will give you your citizenship as much as I want mine from Estonia. So uh, you just have to choose the country and we will <laughs> make you citizen countries or even more if you want. And I see that Monsef just came. Oh, Monsef, that's great. So uh, we're relying heavily on this, uh, this partnership with ACNOA. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. And sorry, I had a problem sorry, with the net, but uh, no problem. I'm here with you for all the initiatives. Perfect. Oh, really great. We had so great uh, uh, this kind of inspirational story. Uh, and uh, from Jonut from Romania, let's do it Romania. They have the platform. But we recorded all this session and definitely we can we can talk about it in, in, in more concrete way and also see how we can relate it to Olympic Games and so on. Uh, thank you, Stefan. I have been living already several years in Maputo, in Mozambique. I really like to go there one day again and see how it's how it looked like right now. But maybe I'm coming to Senegal too. Okay. No, now I'm sad now because I was expecting. Yeah, about coming to Cameroon. And Cameroon, yes. <laughs> <Okay. Yeah. laughs> but anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you all, and. Um, so um, I guess we, we uh, keep on working on the program. We will make it better. Uh, and uh, to all the African leaders, well, the, the message is always the same. We'll start small, uh, we'll carve the program, we'll have mistakes and it's okay. We we'll learn from it and we'll make it better. Uh, the most important thing is to start. If we don't start, we don't know. Then uh, let's start and let's, uh, let's uh, find uh, what's good and uh, what doesn't work and let's make this program rich. But let's for Africa because Africa deserves it and deserves all the energy that we have. Uh, it's a great continent and uh, it can offer a lot to the world if we do it. So let's do it. Have a great day to all of you and uh, thank you. Uh, Mohammed, I, I just want to say that we will have the next meeting, I think, a week after, so we can talk about this uh, uh, platform too, if that's yeah. okay to you. Yeah. Of course, of course, I'm, uh, I'm as, uh, available as long as you call me, no problem. I'm here yeah. available for this, no problem. Okay. Thank yeah. you very much again for Perfect. all. Okay, thank you so much.